Hi, this is Randy Kurt. Glad to have you back. And I want to take just a couple of minutes today. I hope you don't mind to uh, do a little housekeeping. Number one, if you haven't read the book, if you're interested in these videos and you haven't bought the book yet, uh, you need to buy the Elon Musk mission. Uh, it's available in audio, paperback, hardback, any way that you like it, Kindle, um, any way that you like to read it. The same kind of content that we're talking about here is exactly what we do in the book, but we go into more detail and there's far more stuff that I could possibly ever get to on this YouTube video. So that's one thing. Number two, in this last week, we've created quite a number of videos that have drawn a lot of attention and they roughly fall into three categories. One category would be the moats of, of, uh, of the Tesla company. And this we cover in great detail in the book, but I'm starting to do some uh, YouTube videos on the moats. If you're interested in that, look, I'll always include the word boat in the uh, title. You can go to the uh, to the channel and find all the different ones that have moat in the title. Moats are important, as you can well imagine, in terms of competition. You want to keep the competition at bay. The more moats, the better. All right. Another category, a, a bunch of the videos have been done so far, have been kind of newsy, um, dealing with uh, energy uh, dealing with the with the cyber trucks primarily those have been the two biggest uh, pieces of content we've been creating everybody's very interested right now in the energy thing which we broke a couple of months ago and which is now uh, catching everybody's attention uh, in the twitter sphere and then also on the cyber truck i mean the uh, semi truck which uh, you know once it came out everybody started paying attention to just how big of a business that could be uh, it could potentially be as many dollars as the auto side of things and energy as well. So we're talking about three different categories, all three of which could be huge. And then we are also doing some on the on the uh, Optimus robot. And in fact, I'll be doing another one of those. The very next video after this one will be on Optimus robot. Again, to answer some of your questions, a lot of questions about the robot. Um, I think that uh, I think I can answer most of those questions for you. Okay, so what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna talk about the next stages of this this whole energy mega pack story. Um, everybody is, uh, I mean, it really is the biggest story of the week other than Twitter. Um, and so what do we, what do, can we add to the story so far about mega packs? Well, I think the big thing that wasn't covered is demand. So let's make sure that everybody's clear that if they do build 25 factories to make 40 gigawatts of uh, of uh, energy storage in each of these uh, mega pack factories, that there will be enough demand out there for one terawatt of energy storage. So let's just go down a quick list. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments below. Maybe you'll have some categories I haven't even thought of, of places where these uh, mega packs uh, storage uh, products can go. So, you know, the first one would be. <laughs> to back up the trucks. Now, if you read, if you watch the video, oh, by the way, all of the videos that have been getting a lot of attention this last week, down in the description, I've got them all linked. So you can just drop down there, look at the list, see if any of those are interesting to you, and then just, just uh, click click on the link and, and see the next one. Okay, so um, what the number one place, not probably the number two place, that these uh, mega packs are gonna go is in support of the Tesla semi-trucks. We estimate, uh, uh, Brian Wang, who, who did a lot of the science on this and really went deep on it, uh, and there's a video on that as well. Brian estimates that each five mega, every five semi-trucks will require one uh, mega pack. So whether that mega pack is located at the factory whether that mega pack is located at a distribution center, a, a retail store like a Walmart or a grocery store, um, or whether those mega packs are located at truck stops, um, there's going to be mega packs necessary in order to support the grid. The grid is not going to be substantial enough to take care of this of this dr tremendous draw of energy. So the so the the uh, mega pack in this particular case, will be a major help in, in ma managing the energy needed in order to fill these mega, uh, these uh, semi-trucks quickly. Um, and in every single case, you're probably also going to want a lot of solar to go behind that as well, because the cost is going to be uh, fairly substantial, even at, you know, seven cents, eight cents, uh, if it's it bought wholesale, or say 11, 12 cents if it's bought uh, at full price a kilowatt, 
uh, if you can do that with uh, with solar as opposed to doing it off the grid, uh, it's going to be uh, a, a good deal for whoever it is that's making the money off of that system, off of that energy supply system. Okay, so lots and lots of megapacks. Let's just take a look. If Tesla says they're going to make 50,000 trucks uh, in, of, of semi trucks in 2024, that means they're going to need 10,000 megapacks to support those 50,000 trucks. Well, 10,000 megapacks um, is the production capacity for one year uh, in Lathrop. So um, you can see <laughs> that, that, that it's going to take all of Lathrop just to do one year of, uh, of uh, the, the uh, semi-trucks. So now, if I'm assuming, and I think it would be wise to assume that Tesla will increase the number of trucks that they produce in 2025 compared to 2024. Therefore, another Lathrop would be needed in order to support that. So that's just for the semi-trucks, okay? Number two, of course, there is the utility uh, size storage uh, required to back up um, the uh, wind and solar installations that are going out there. I've done some research uh, in a couple of weeks. I plan to do probably one or two videos on just how much solar and just how much wind uh, energy is is underway, is has already been planned, has already been financed, has already uh, been plotted in terms of where it's going to go. Uh, you can do your own research. It, it didn't take me long to do the research, but I will do some uh, some some conversation about that because a lot of people are worried about the grid. How is the grid going to manage all of these electric cars and all these electric trucks? Um, and it's a valid question. And the answer is, well, it's going to come from solar and wind ramp ups that are pretty dramatic. It's pretty uh, crazy just how fast these things are ramping up. But I'll do separate videos on those. So the utilities are going to need a lot of these batteries, um, huge amounts of these batteries. And that's what we're already seeing out of Lathrop. Uh, we have been able to confirm that there are uh, you know, 50 uh, batteries uh, pretty much at any given time, 50 batteries sitting out in the parking lot in Lathrop, and that there are semi-trucks upon semi-trucks sitting there waiting to take these, uh, these batteries away. So the production at Lathrop has been solved. That was an issue for a few days. We now know that, in fact, uh, there's there is production at Lathrop. It looks like the 25 a day makes sense. It could be a little more. It could be a little less. It could be a lot more. We don't actually know yet, but there are now people with drones that are uh, attempting to get us some very uh, uh, some better figures uh, with regard to that. So that would be the first two places that you're going to need a lot of uh, a lot of these mega packs. Uh, you're also going to need them for the supercharging. Uh, 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 supercharging locations. So right now, the goal, I think by the, I'm gonna, I hope I'm going to get this number right. By the end of 23, we're supposed to have 100,000 charging portals in the world. I'm going to estimate that it's roughly 10 to 15 uh, portals per station. Um, but I think you're also going to need one mega pack at least for every 10. So roughly speaking, we're going to need uh, 10,000 chargers uh, a, a make, another Lathrop, one full Lathrop of production in order to put one charger for every 10 of these uh, charging portals, supercharger portals. Um, and then, of course, uh, uh, with the dramatic increase in the number of cars that are going to be manufactured and the dramatic number of additional cars from other, fact, of other companies that are going to be made, Tesla is going to have to double again the number, maybe triple again, the number of these uh, uh, portals that they're making, the charging, actual charging units that they're making. And again, every 10 or so of those is gonna need a mega pack. Now, it's not required. The grid can handle the, the slower charging speeds, uh, uh, but it would be way better in terms of being able to make it less expensive for whoever's providing the energy, whether it's Tesla or someone else. Um, and then, of course, you're going to want solar to back that up as well. So huge, huge amounts of potential uh, gross uh, sales and, and, and profits just from the charging stations themselves as Tesla continues to ramp them uh, at breakneck speed. It's, it's going to be something to behold. All right, so that's another huge use uh, for these chargers. Another big use, uh, McDonald's today announced that they're going to put in solar 
had all of their um, distribution centers and, and other locations where, where sol solar makes sense and where solar is going to go in, they're also going to be putting in some kind of a energy storage system. It hasn't been announced yet whether these solar panels and or the energy uh, uh, storage units will be Tesla brand, but that's just an example. This is going to be happening all over the world. It's going to be happening because it makes sense now. The cost of solar, the cost of energy storage makes sense for factories and distribution centers, et cetera, to put it in. And it also is going to be something that from a social uh, good standpoint, these companies are going to want to be able to say that they are running off of, uh, off of solar and or wind and or uh, energy storage. The next one is going to be governments. This is one I've been talking about for two years now. You can go back and look at my old tweets and whatnot. It blows my mind that if, in fact, the governments of the world, uh, that a lot of the governments of the world believe that we are heading into some kind of a, an issue with CO2 that is going to destroy the world or going to raise our oceans. Or, and, and, and listen, I'm, I'll be neutral on that for today. Um, I just don't like, I don't like particulates in the air. I think that getting rid of uh, gas and getting rid of, of coal and getting rid of, of oil, all good things, whether or not there's a CO2, CO2 crisis in terms of global warming. I don't really care. I'm good just to get rid of all of the pollution and to run off of sustainable uh, products. I think those are two excellent reasons, even if there turns out there's no actual global warming for those of you who don't think there is. So I'm staying neutral. If you think there is, great, even more reason. If you don't think there is, do you like pollution? <laughs> do you like the idea that we might run out of energy someday? The sun is going to keep going and the wind is going to keep blowing and there's plenty of materials to build the batteries. So why not switch? So why haven't the governments been switching if they believe this so strongly? It's just mind boggling to me that the militaries and the police and all of the government fleets and all of the government buildings that have rooftops um, are not switching as rapidly as they possibly can to solar and to batteries and to wind as necessary and to EVs, uh, to, to uh, uh, electronic uh, elect electric cars. The post office today announced that of the 60 million, I think this is a, I don't may have the headline just barely off. I believe this, the 60,000 vehicles that they're gonna be buying uh, over the next few years for the post office, uh, some 40,000 of those are going to be EVs. The question is, why not all of them? I, I can't figure it out. Anyway, but at least the post office finally got the uh, got the memo. It's time to switch to electric. Okay, so governments are going to need thousands and th tens and hundreds of thousands of ener energy storage of these large batteries in order to support the the solar that'll be on roofs, the solar that will be used uh, to manage fleets, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that's another big category. Um, a huge one that uh, is barely being talked about, but ultimately it, the distributed approach to energy is going to be the, the thing that all of us are gonna want. So we're gonna want every subdivision, every tract, we call them in California, um, every uh, group of homes hopefully will eventually be having power walls or some kind of battery in their homes or in the apartments. Um, and then regionally, let's say maybe for every 100 homes or whatever the number will be, there will be a battery pack, a mega pack um, that will be supporting those uh, wall, wall batteries in each home. So most of the time you'll run off a solar some of the sometimes if you don't have solar, you'll be running off of the grid, but you'll be using the battery in order to balance the grid and to manage uh, the lowest possible cost. But then if you put a mega pack in the neighborhood that backs up all of that, now you'll use the utility even less. So slowly but surely, the neighborhood will go off of the grid. Uh, and that will be by using these mega packs combined with some kind of power walls. So that's going to be another major use. New subdivisions, new tracks are now beginning to be built with this already in place. Um, and it's only a matter of time before maybe all subdivisions are that way by government decision or by because it makes sense. Uh, and then it'll slowly start to seep into existing neighborhoods as it becomes obvious that it's a huge benefit to everyone. So that's another big category. 
Um, of course, Tesla is setting itself up to be a utility uh, in many places, in England, in Texas, and other places. Uh, Tesla has already set up DBAs and set up uh, uh, divisions where they will be acting as a utility. In some of those cases, I suppose they will be generating their own electricity using solar. Uh, in many of those cases, they will be using the grid and battery, the megapack batteries, in order to manage grid storage um, and uh, to make it uh, to to use the arbitrage that's possible by buying uh, the energy when it's plentiful and cheap, and then selling it into the uh, homes that are a part of the system uh, when it, when it uh, is uh, expensive, uh, and then arbitraging, making money on that difference. So clearly, Tesla, Tesla is setting itself up to be a utility in many circumstances. Uh, we'll continue to see that happening. Um, he's already mentioned that cargo ships, cargo ships, uh, you know, the big container ships and other, uh, you know, oil tankers and other kinds of things that are carrying cargo around the world uh, it's already possible. It's already makes sense to switch them to battery. Um, they're already set up uh, to run off of uh, off of battery power. Uh, so the diesel engines uh, trans uh, change the energy into uh, DC, and then the DC runs the motors. So it's. I think <laughs> I'm no expert. Believe me, I'm reading headlines here. Do your own homework. Tell me in the comments where I'm completely wrong. <laughs> but the headlines I'm reading say that this will be a, an easier switch than some other cases to switch these cargo ships over to running off of these large batteries. Um, and, and potentially when building new cargo ships to build them into where maybe it's structural. I'm not sure, that's just an idea. I'm probably completely wrong. All right, what about the next one? Um, other companies, <laughs> by the way, there are other companies that are making uh, electric cars, and they're making they're going to be making electric trucks. Well, they already are making electric trucks. Probably some of them are going to try to make electric semi trucks. Um, good luck competing with Tesla on that one. But all of them are going to need charging stations, and they're already building charging stations. And the state of California and the United States government and other governments are giving incentives to build lots and lots and lots and lots of charging stations. Well, Tesla has their own need for mega packs for their charging stations, but these other charging stations that are being built will be a lot more successful, a lot more profitable, and a lot more green if they have a mega pack and solar in order to support those, uh, those stations. So a massive, uh, I'm predicting that Tesla by 2027 will be making about 20% of all the electric vehicles. And, that, and we, I'm gonna do a video on that. I've been promising it. I'm pr it's in the book, by the way. If you get the Elon Musk mission, you can, you can read ahead. <laughs> you can read ahead and find out just exactly how many cars General Motors needs to make and uh, Kia needs to make and uh, BYD needs to make in order to get us to 100% um, uh, 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 EV cars by uh, uh, 2027 in terms of manufacturing. So all of those other guys, so Tesla's only going to be 20%. So 80% of the companies out there are going to need to have a grid, they're gonna need a, they're gonna need charging stations for the 80% and those charging stations are gonna actually need more electricity uh, per car because they're not as efficient as Tesla cars. So that's another massive need. Now, does that, are, there's also gonna be other people making these battery storage systems like Tesla, but once again, will they be as good? All right, moving on. Um, what about the profits from energy storage? That, that, that came up a couple of times on, on Twitter over the last few days. Is it as profitable as the cars? And I spent some time on this on, on one of them the other day, but, but there's a, 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 a very good reason to believe that the profits will be at least as good on the sale of the energy storage unit, the mega pack itself. In addition to the mega pack, they're gonna sell solar probably the company's going to buy solar from Tesla. Maybe not. Maybe they'll buy it from somebody else. They're going to need the charging station itself in order to charge the, the trucks. Um, you, so you're going to get all of these different sales when you're making the initial sale of the mega pack. But then once you've got that profit from all of that, you're also going to have a profit from having designed the system to go specifically where it's going to go. So Tesla has has people design being either either they'll include it in the price or they'll charge extra 
to design the system, then there's going to be ongoing charges for the software, for software updates, over-the-air updates. We know all about that. There's going to be ongoing charges for maintenance, probably going to come from Tesla. And there's going to be ongoing charges from upgrades and other kinds of things that will happen over the years. So there's there's a constant flow. Oh, I'm sorry. And for the, for the arbitrage. So Tesla may be involved, probably will be involved commonly in the arbitrage of any of the grid uh, management of all of this through the software. So these are just all things where Tesla is going to have a stream of income from these products going in, not to mention eventually, well, these last a very long time. So replacement might be years out. Okay, so what's next here? Um, there is ongoing, so that, that, in fact, I think that's basically what I wanted to cover today. So we've talked about the profitability in one of the other videos. We've talked about the fact that we're now up to 25 megapacks a day in Lathrop. We've talked about the fact that the, the re, even the retail investors basically don't know it. Certainly the street doesn't know it. Nobody's paying attention that Lathrop is equal to a Berlin first phase. Okay, it's not being talked about. So that's what we talked about in earlier videos. Today, I wanted to make sure that everybody understood that if Tesla is going to build five Lathrop's a year until they get to at least 25 all over the world, that there will be demand for these facilities to produce uh, 40 gigawatts a year each. And again, maybe some of those will be larger or smaller than Lathrop, but assuming the 40 gigawatts each, they'll need about 25 of these over the next four or five years uh, in order to meet just the things that they're doing themselves and the things we already know about. So I hope uh, that was useful to you. If it was, please like and do all the things you know to do. Subscribe. We've gotten a lot of subscribers over the last week. So help out the channel by liking, subscribing, uh, and then um, lovely to talk to you today. See you next time.